Okay, AP Scholars, I just wanted to show you a little bit about GitHub. GitHub is going to be how we hand in our projects, so I just wanted to show you how to get going with that. I've logged into GitHub, so if you don't have an account yet, you'll want to go to uh, github.com. Somehow I'll zoom in. There we go. GitHub. Not GitHub. It's github.com. And it's very... Um, very famous website for people to store and share and manage their code, back it up, uh, and control the, the versions of it as well. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is just show you how to make a new repository. I don't actually need a new repository um, because I have an existing one. So I'm, in addition to making a new one, I'm also going to show you how to update an existing one. So let's just go ahead and make a new repository here. Uh, repository is a word for a place to store a some code. So it could be for a particular program or a project or it could be for a particular assignment. So in our case the every assignment is going to have a repository. So if there's 20 questions in an assignment they're all going to go into the same repository. So you might want to choose a logical name like AP um, I, don't, uh, unit, uh, ch I don't know what we called it uh, exercise I can't spell exercise to one or something like that like you could kind of choose whatever name you want because uh, as it turns out you'll just send it to me uh, and that should be fine and then description uh, if you want to put a description to explain what it is that's your your business I'm not too worried about it but you might want to organize it um, in whatever way you like and then make sure it's public otherwise I can't see it so thanks for making that public and then we can go from here so then we can create the repository that's all it is Create repository. Woohoo! It'll take a moment, and once it's done, then we can start uploading stuff. It's got a bunch of gobbledygook here. <laughs> I mean, it's not um, gobbledygook, but it's not too exciting for us. So now the next step is to upload our code here, and once it's done, then we can send a link to me to hand it in. So check it out. We got. Uh, we could start typing in files here if you wanted to, but then that's not really very efficient. That's why we have an editor. Uh, or upload an existing file. So that's what we actually want to do. So I'm going to upload an existing file. So here's where we drag and drop um, the files to put them into this repository. So I am going to go grab my... This is the files here. I would recommend to drop in the whole folder. Um, not just the files themselves, but the whole folder. So I'm going to drag and drop them in. And we're going to watch it busily do these things. We're going to upload the C text and the class files too. Might as well. I don't want you to be picking just the Java files. It's a little bit inefficient. So it looks like it's a done. So what I can do now is go to the bottom and commit changes. And once I've done that, then voila, we've, we've succeeded. Uh, it'll take a minute to process your files. Hmm. So if that was uh, if that made sense, then the next step is, yeah, here it is. So here's all my code. And now this is uploaded to the cloud. So you have it wherever you go. Um, when you, if you come to school to work on it and then you go home to work on it or you go to your, um, I don't know, <laughs> you, you, we're not traveling too much these days, so you're not going out too far. But if you go to like your dad's house or your mom's house or something and you're going back and forth, you can you bring your code with you. So that's pretty uh, fantastic. And you can even click here and look inside your code to read your code of what you have accomplished so far if you want to. Kind of pointless to read the binary files. And I don't think it, I think it shows you can view raw. So, oh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to let us do it. <laughs> that's okay. We don't care. Um, the next thing I want to show you is if you make a change, how is it that you can, um, you know, add it again? So it's really easy. It's really, really easy. Actually, I want to go to my other uh, original repository because I, um, I have actual changes to make. So I'm going to go search for this repository. I do want um, two one, but I want the original two one. This one here. Yeah, awesome. So this is the original one, and I want to update it now. So I'm going to go add the files again. So when you add files to a repository, it just overwrites the old files. 
so you can always just dump it in and I guess I didn't put in the folder so I guess I won't worry about that too much I'll just drop the files in um, but I want you to know that you don't have to worry about overwriting yeah it'll overwrite and that's good and it'll also remember your previous versions so if you overwrote something and you want to go back to an old version it'll remember all of your versions every single one so that's fantastic so I'm gonna update these now so I'm gonna go add file so I'm gonna upload files and I'm just gonna drag them in here so I guess uh, these old ones I oops that's my videos all my videos I'm taking <laughs> for these courses are they're gonna run out of hard drive space soon um, so all these guys here so I'm going to select it all don't forget your readme file as well because that's gonna have some of your answers in it and I'll just drag it in and it's gonna overwrite some of them and some of them and there's no changes to be made whatsoever so it won't overwrite the ones that are exactly the same and then I can click commit and we can just let it go it'll do the processing and then we'll have updated our changes so as you work on your code you can just periodically uh, upload to that same repository you know if you finish something save it upload it upload it upload it and it's okay if you overwrite things because that's part of the, the goal um, let's see I'd like to show just one more thing. Let's see, area to radius is the one that changed the most. So if I click on area to radius, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, here's the history. So uh, this is inside of like looking at the .java file for area to radius. Up here is a history, and we can take a look at older versions of our code. So I can go back to my first upload, which was last year, September 23rd, apparently, and I can take a look at at this commit, and I can see sort of you know what I the green is what I added at the time, so I can see oh I I added all this stuff, and I can see my original program that was wrong, but it's not lost right I overwrote it but it's it's still there, and then I'll go back, and I can look at my new version and I can see what I changed it's in red all the things that I changed and what um, was was added so you can sort of see the green is what I added the red is what I changed if it's white then it didn't change at all nothing changed so it gives you a sense of the history of your project and you can kind of uh, use that possibly in your to your advantage if you screw something up you can go back in time so to speak okay folks so that's a little bit about github last thing to know is that um, for handing it in you'll want to send me the link to your repository so that's going to be the link to like this screen here so you'll be inside your assignment uh, to one or whatever you call it uh, repository and you will just send me this link here and you can just add that to the team's assignment uh, when you go to hand it in so instead of attaching like a doc file or something you can attach a link so attach that link there and that'll take me straight to your repository so I can look at your code and give you credit for doing this assignment. So that's going to be how we use GitHub. I hope that was clear. If you have any questions about it, um, you know, don't hesitate to ask on Teams or send me an email. Uh, in addition, uh, don't hesitate to ask me in class either or make some flex time appointment, which I know is tough, um, but um, you know, see if you can find it. At worst, just hand it in any old way you can for now, but do figure out how to get that GitHub going. It's easy for me to read, but more importantly, it's best for you. Like It's so good that it does this backup procedure. Always good to backup to the cloud uh, in case something happens to your machine locally, and it starts building a programmer profile, because eventually professional programmers use this, and you're, if you're going down that road, you'll have this big body of work that you've been using. Um, so that's fantastic. Also just learning how to use GitHub is sort of a thing everyone has to know in university. My, uh, the reason I use GitHub now is my students who had gone to university uh, came back to Bing to visit me and I asked them like you know over time various people what was the one thing you didn't learn at Bing 
about computer science you wish you had known going into university and a lot of people just about everybody said github learn github so that's why we're doing it it's and it's good for you it's just, it just does the job we want it to do it's a super useful skill to learn all all good loved github so i'm going to stop the video now have yourselves a great day everybody